Thanks very much. Um, so my name's Ed, as you know, um, and what I'll talk about is the past. So I'll be talking about what the big project is and, and what we've done over the last two years. And then the second part of the presentation will be much more exciting because Nuri is going to talk about the future and, and the, the potential that we have in a, in a public-private partnership. So well, what is big um, and, and why did it come about? Well, we all know in this room about the, the, the potential for big data from a a systems and a technical point of view. And we're also aware that there's a massive opportunity in, in the economic space as well. The, the market for big data is growing much faster than it is for IT, um, and the opportunities that we have are, are, are great. However, there is a, a slight problem from a European perspective because the, the major big data companies, the, the companies that are using it the most, are actually mostly US-based. And while we do have some significant players in Europe, as a whole, we're not adopting the technologies as much as the US organizations are. What this means in the European context is that our European leader, leadership in, in, in the Commission believe that big data has the potential to transform our economy. And they, they, there's a clear desire at European level to do this. Um, also, from an industry, industry point of view as well, it is recognised that this is a true opportunity for, for, for Europe to actually be a leader in this space. And this was the, the motivating context for the big project, was to look at how Europe could actually start to, to take that leadership position. So the project had a very simple set of objectives. It started uh, 26 months ago and it finishes at the end of this month. And what we wanted to, to do was to be able to get a clear understanding of what the potential was for big data in Europe. What the uh, technical challenges existed for European companies to adopt big data, what non-technical challenges existed, what kind of research or what kind of supports could be put in place by the Commission to be able to enable uh, Europe to take this leadership position. What was very important about this is that it wasn't to be just an academic exercise. It was critical that we actually engaged as many industry people and, and industry companies in the process and to, to actually drive that and, and to, to get those requirements from them. The, the consortium that was put in place is from all over Europe. It includes a mixture of both academic and industrial partners. And these are the initial core set of partners that actually started to, to execute the project. But we in, included an awful lot more stakeholders than this. The, the, the project had a very simple plan. The first thing to do was to do a, a survey of the state of the art in technologies to be able to understand what the, the, the state of play was with big data. And then we were to, to define a road mapping activity to understand what were the key things that Europe should be investing in, should be researching in, in order to enable a big data leadership position for Europe. And then finally, at the end, what we wanted to do was to figure out how do we have long-term sustainability of this? What kind of mechanism could be used at European level to, to drive this initiative? And that's what Nuri will talk about later on. To give an idea of, of how the, the project went about its work, we have two very key elements in the project. The first ones are our sectoral forms, and these were working groups that looked at different sectors and how they could apply big data, studying the opportunities for, for big data technologies to actually revolutionize processes and to add new business value within different industrial sectors. And each of these groups um, studied that and engaged those stakeholders to do that. The second part of, of the, the project was these um, um, technical working groups that were all around the big data value chain. So we, we looked at data acquisition technologies around structured, unstructured data, sensor data, IoT data. We looked at data analysis, what kinds of uh, what, what kinds of processing can we perform on the data to be able to reveal insights, to be able to analyze it, and to create insights for organizations. We also looked at data curation, the role of data quality. How can we improve the quality of data, make sure that our data is, is, is fit for purpose and, and, and is of high quality. We also looked at data storage technologies to understand what the limitations and the potential of these technologies were. And then finally, we looked at data usage and how organizations can specifically use data to be able to drive their, their operations, what kind of techniques do they need to be able to support business decisions, um, and what type of technologies are, are key to doing that. As part of that process, we couldn't figure this out by ourselves, so we had to inter interview a large number of stakeholders, subject ma matter experts, um, early adopters, visionaries across a lot of different uh, organizations, and these are just some of the, the companies that we, that we did interview um, over the last two years. What's interesting from the outcomes of this is that we actually have created a number of, of, of uh, dissemination materials that are, are, are available on our website. Many of the interviews that were conducted are actually available as videos. And, and in these interviews, you can see some really key insights um, from these experts and also some of the key limitations that they found with the technologies when they tried to apply them. 
Um, from this, we, we developed a set of, of technical white papers. We also um, developed um, sector reform white papers as well. And all of this information is available on our big project website. And the, the final results of the project will also be um, uploaded there as well. So I would encourage everyone to take a look at the, um, at the website to, to get further details on this. To give you a, a little preview of the, the key findings that we actually found within the project, um, as you say, there's about a thousand pages worth of reports on, on our webpage, but, but the key things that we did find is that big data technology is evolutionary. In, in many cases, what we're finding is that people are, are finding new uses for older technologies and older approaches that are there, but that the technology itself is solid. And, and as we've seen in this conference, there's a lot of very, very promising and interesting technologies that are evolving. The revolutionary part very much comes in the processes. So organizations needing to understand how this technology can actually revolutionize the way that they do businesses, that, that they do business. And this is a, 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 a key change for a lot of organizations, thinking of how they can use data to drive their operations and to transform, them, transform themselves. One interesting thing, when people look at the different Vs of big data, um, a lot of organizations felt that they could deal with the volume, they could actually work with that, they could even deal with the velocity, with the sensor data. But one of the major, major challenges that they had was around data variety. Being able to deal with lots of different formats of data, and, and, and that was expertly um, described in the last presentation, but there was major, major challenges around interoperability, data integration, data sharing. And another key area of, of, of value is definitely around the area of reuse. Looking at data from different sectors, and, and how organizations can grab data from different parts of their organization to help them understand how their operations are working or to be able to, to, to drive new opportunities for themselves. So the, the ability to be able to share data has great potential. When we look at the point, from the point of view of business brokers, the major things that were actually stopping organizations actually using big data technologies, well, the key one is, and it's a very, very obvious one, but a lot of organizations are not thinking about their data and how their data can help drive their business. There's not many data-driven strategies within IT organizations, and the businesses themselves do not necessarily have that leadership. And this is a key thing that needs to change. Organizations need to start looking much more at their data assets and understanding what that means. As I mentioned before, there's significant issues around data integration, data sharing, data exchange, and also that goes into the area of data privacy and regulation. So again, there's much work that's actually needed there. There's a lot of uncertainty within organizations about what data privacy means to them, how they need to actually regulate their data, what their requirements are, what their legal responsibilities are. And then finally, and actually most importantly, the biggest challenge that organizations are facing is a lack of human expertise. So everyone in this room um, are big data experts. You're going to have jobs for the next 50 years, no problems at all. Um, so congratulations. <laughs> but on a serious note, this is really important because what organizations need are people that understand the technology, but also understand how that technology can help their businesses. So we need experts that are technically capable, but also business savvy as well, understanding how the business can be changed and how data can be the key driver of that. So just to give some ideas from, from all of this analysis, all of the stakeholder interviews that we did, all of the case studies that we, we identified, what we've done is identified a set of common requirements that would be needed um, to be able to solve some of these problems. And this is the, the initial set of, 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 our, of, of our road mapping um, exercise. And you can see we've identified both technical and non-technical um, limitations. And we've also looked at things like regulation as well. For each of the sectors, we've actually identi identified a roadmap as well. Um, and again, all this information is available on our website or will be um, within, the next, uh, within, the, within the next month as the project closes. So that's the, that's, that's the history of, of how we came here. That's the story of the big project, of how we analysed uh, the challenges that were there in the European ecosystem and what we needed to do to, be, to, to create uh, a leadership position for Europe. Uh, with it, sorry, a leadership, a world leadership position for Europe within the big data space. Now, what Noria gets to talk about is much more interesting. She gets to talk about where we go from here. And I'll hand it over to Noria so she can take her slides. Thank you very much, Ed. In fact, I've realized that we come today very combined. <laughs> very good. So, as Ed has said, my name is Nuria de Lama. I'm representative of ATOS Research and Innovation to the European Commission, which basically means that I'm coordinating the research activities of ATOS in the European landscape and basically for the environment of the European Commission. And uh, my presentation today will be a bit different to everything that you have heard so, so far, yesterday and today, but I hope that it will be interesting for you because it will give you some opportunities to get engaged with us in future activities around big data. So I hope that this will be really of your interest. Uh, I'm not sure if you all know what PPP means. Can you raise your hand if you know what it means? Just to have an idea. 
Okay, not everyone. Basically, it stands for Public-Private Partnership and is an association of private companies and public uh, institutions like the European Commission to do something together. And basically, Ed has uh, talked a lot about uh, some of the roadmaps we have created and a lot of people here have discussed on these two days about a lot of potential technologies that could be useful for the business. Normally, what we try to do with these projects is saying what we should do, but then there is no one that will implement these kind of roadmaps. And therefore, this project had from the very beginning the ambition of not only saying what should be the future priorities of Europe, but trying to set up the community that will manage to implement this kind of challenges in Europe. So that is the part that I will explain today. And the basic motivation, we have heard a lot about market figures so far these two days, is that uh, first of all there is a clear need for all companies to be able to use big data technologies because of the growth of data in terms of volume, in terms of variety, in terms of velocity, all the Vs. And basically to get value. And this does not only apply to internet companies or to very innovative companies. We really think that for the traditional industries in Europe, like automotive, aeronautics, supply chain, agri-food, for all these companies it will really be needed being able to deal with a huge amounts of data. And if they don't know exactly how to extract value from this data, they will not be able to compete in a global market. So we don't see this as an added value, we really see it as a need to remain competitive in the market and not to die in the coming years. And uh, therefore we see big data as a need for everyone in the coming years to remain competitive. But on the other hand, we see that there there are many opportunities, a lot of companies are willing to pay for this kind of technologies, they feel that there is a value even if there are no clear cases on the return on investment. And uh, maybe the need is for everyone, but are the opportunities for everyone or only for few people? And my colleague Ed has mentioned that uh, US companies are very much well advanced than European companies. If you have a look at major vendors in big data, uh, maybe in the major 20 vendors in the, in the world, we have like two, three European companies, maybe five, but no more than that. So this, this means that if we want Europe to have a competitive position and be strong in this market, we really have to do something. That was the motivation and uh, you will see that in this presentation we have several pictures of Ms. Nelly Cruz, as you know she is uh, the Commissioner for the Digital Agenda, former Vice President of the European Commission and uh, in the last months, I would say years, she has been defending all the time the importance of data for the future economy. She really believes and we also believe that the economy will be a data driven economy in the future and therefore if Europe doesn't react we will not be able to be competitive against other competitive companies in Asia or US or other economies of the world. So basically, she has all the time called people for an action in Europe. And uh, this PPP means basically that we are trying to set up a community, an industrially led initiative to drive the implementation of these big data roadmaps and ensure business impact. This is not only about technology, this is basically about business. And uh, let me tell you who are the drivers of this initiative. Basically, this has been a joint effort between two initiatives. The big project that I'm representing today as part of, of one of the partners, which is ATOS. And there you see the partners that have been mentioned by Ed before, several universities, and also big companies like Siemens or ATOS, or also Open Knowledge Foundation, Press Association, many others. And then an initiative which is called NESI, which is a, an, in, an industrial initiative that tries to defend the interest of uh, the software and IT industry in Europe. This uh, NES initiative has more than 450 members and all of them have participated in this process in order to set up which are the major priorities in big data for the future. So you can see that a lot of big industrial companies of Europe have been involved in the process already for many months, like IB, well, IBM is not European but uh, they have a lot of offices here in, in Europe. But we have SAP, we have Siemens, we have Thales, Engineering, Indra, so many big companies in Europe. Orange, most of the telecommunication companies have been involved with us in creating this initiative. And these are only the drivers, Nessie and the big project. But Basically, my main message here is that this is an open thing. So we have tried to work in the coming, in the last months, to create this initiative, but this is only the beginning, and I don't want anyone to think that this is the ownership of the partners that have been working so far, because this is open, and the major objective of us being here today is basically invite you to be part of these activities in the future. So come in, we are open. But what is behind this concept of the public-private partnership on big data? Basically, what we want to do is say setting up a community that is able to implement these big data technologies and the value out of that and create 
business in Europe, create business in, in Europe and uh, European jobs. And of course, everything should be based on the availability of high quality data assets and the technologies that are needed in order to extract value out of them. So we are not dealing with any kind of European job, but basically those ones that depend on data. But uh, as I said before, technology is not the most important thing and there are many other things that will be essential in order to be successful in this market. That's why we rely very much on a concept that we have called the innovation spaces or innovation ecosystems, which are meeting points where you will find access to data assets, to technologies, but also to the right stakeholders to ensure that innovation can happen. So this is not again about bringing a lot of vendors with uh, wonderful big data technologies, but no users behind, but really creating the ecosystem that will allow the users and the technology providers to meet together and to ensure that innovation happens and new business models happen. And uh, as you can imagine, based on my explanation so far, this is not only technology, this is a multidisciplinary initiative. And uh, this is quite important because normally in the context of the European Commission, we are all the time working in creating new technologies. And for 15 years, I've seen lots of projects that were very unsuccessful, creating prototypes that in the end are not used. And sometimes it's not because the technology is bad, but it's also because we are not solving other challenges and other barriers that are essential in order to open the market. Some of these things have been mentioned along these two days. These are the regulatory and the legal aspects, many things that have to do with business. But if we are only researchers working in uh, IT, in telecom, in big data technologies, we will not solve these issues. We need other kind of experts. And therefore, this initiative will really target solving not only the technical problems, that most of them are already on their way, but basically things that have to do with creating the right skills in Europe. My colleague has mentioned that before. We don't have the right skills in Europe. We are missing a lot of people that should work in this, and as he said, that's why you will have a job already for many years. But uh, a lot of people are unemployed in Europe, and this is a great opportunity to create uh, new young people that will have the capabilities that my colleague was mentioning. Also legal aspects, providing legal advice to the different companies in Europe. And maybe if you belong to a big company, maybe that is solved in your case. But there are many SMEs, many startups that do not know exactly how to start with this. And therefore we will try to help them in this uh, process. Of course, development of technology that is also involved in the, in the initiative, uh, creating research projects and also development of technologies that are there, but maybe they have not been finalized or they are not uh, to the extent that it is needed by the market. Applications, which is a very important aspect because, uh, you know, again, when I come to these kind of big data conferences, the incredible thing is that we are all the time technology people uh, telling about our products, but there is no one there listening to us to use these kind of technologies. So for us, it's really essential the involvement of the user communities. Many of them know about big data, but some others do not know anything. And in the end, it's not only the value of our company selling these products, but the value of these traditional industries that will be able to take maximum advantage of big data technologies in supply chain, in agri-food, in fisheries, in energy. Let's think, for example, about a smart grid. There are a lot of smart meters out there that is Internet of Things, a huge amount of data that has to be processed by the companies and the energy companies has to deal with this situation. So what we are doing, and we have been doing that already for many months, is talking to people that are representing these kind of usage communities with a lot of them. And that's what we, uh, we think that is also essential for this initiative to be successful. I have mentioned before also the creation of new business models, or at least having the people that understand how to extract value and commercialize these kind of technologies, and why not also having the right cases to show what is the societal impact of these technologies. Because sometimes it's not only business, this is also money that is uh, given by the European Commission and we have to justify that we are using that in the right way. And sometimes maybe the objective is not so economic, but it's maybe a social uh, objective, which is also very important if we are talking, for example, about elderly people, about health, if we get a benefit in that domain and it's not uh, directly an economic benefit, still it will be very good for the European society. So basically the idea here is that you keep in mind that we will cover many angles and it's not only technology development, but also addressing all the other barriers that are preventing Europe from gaining value of these big data technologies. And I have mentioned this several times, is technology plus the innovation ecosystem where the right stakeholders meet to ensure that innovation can flourish. 
Okay, and there are some examples already in Europe. We are not talking only about theoretical things. You may know about these ones because, in fact, one of these examples that I have in the slide come from Germany. Uh, there is one called TerraLab in France, and uh, for example, there is SDIL uh, in Germany. That means uh, Smart Data Innovation Lab, if I'm not wrong. And basically, these kind of environments uh, are composed by infrastructure, physical infrastructure, with the storage, processing capabilities, providing access also to technology and then there is a group of partners that reach agreements including legal agreements and they try to share their data to some extent. So we are not talking about companies that will work independently but about ecosystems where people will get access to the technologies and to data. And uh, this doesn't mean open data initiatives. We have invested already a lot in open data and there is value behind that but we think that there is much more value behind the use of private data. And we think that many companies do not know exactly how to extract value from their, from their data. Some companies, yes, and in fact you know that, for example, Telefonica is reselling part of their data once they are anonymized and they sell that to third parties for the purpose of marketing. And uh, there are many other examples like that, but many companies are creating a lot of data and they are not getting value out of that. But they don't want to sell those data because they don't know what is the value and they don't want to share that because they understand that there is somehow a value behind that but they don't know what it is. And what we want to create is the right secure environments that will uh, uh, push companies to share data because they, they will see that there is a win-win situation. Of course, this sounds like a like a paradise. Of course, we don't expect companies to come to us and say, okay, I want to share my data. That's why we think that especially security and privacy will be very, very essential elements in these environments. We need to ensure that this secure environment guarantees the security in the access to this data. But then we really think that uh, if this is something limited and then it is extended, we will create a lot of value. And as soon as companies that are involved in this kind of business ecosystem realize about the value behind that, they will also encourage other companies to do the same. Okay, and for example, in this uh, Smart Data Innovation Lab, you can see that there are major companies in Germany like Bosch, Itachi, SAP, Siemens. Some of them have also explained their business cases here in these two days. And uh, they are providing their technologies and they are offering that to other stakeholders in the environment. And doesn't mean that, for example, they share their data with whoever in the world for free. You could share your data for a price and you could share your data with some stakeholders but not with everyone in the world. So these kind of agreements are possible. But basically we want things that are around data. We want to promote the accessibility and the availability to private data to ensure that business happens. And as I was saying, an environment where not only the technology providers but also the users and people with other capabilities can ensure that all together we create business. And as part of this process, because I'm telling this very quickly today, but we have been working on that for many, many months. And uh, in fact, around uh, 100 companies have been meeting quite often in the last months to create something that we call a strategic research and innovation agenda, where we are trying to define the main technical priorities for Europe in the future. And let me summarize, even if I cannot go into details, the five major priorities that we have defined with the help of all these companies. Basically, data analytics. Of course, then if you access our documents, you will see that there are lots of pages where you can see a lot of details about this. I'm only trying to summarize the main titles and optimize architectures for analyzing data including real-time data, visualization and user experience. There was a presentation today about that. We think that still there's a lot of work to do there. Data management engineering as a discipline and privacy and anonymization mechanisms. All these are technical priorities that we think are essential for the next years. And as I said before, besides the research priorities, we are defining the instruments to make them happen and one of them is this innovation spaces that I have mentioned and another thing is uh, something that we have called the lighthouse projects which are very big projects large-scale demonstrations focusing on cross fertilization between the data coming from different domains and serving as a very good use case for others to imitate or to replicate these kind of experiments in many occasions some companies do not understand how to use big data, but then they see some examples and for them it is easier to understand the value. And we think that we are still lacking a good base of these kind of business cases that can illustrate what could be the return on investment. 
I will not. Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I touched the microphone. Uh, I will not go into the details, but as part of this exercise, we have defined what could be what could be the expected outcomes of these research and development activities in the coming years. And uh, as I said before, one important thing is that we will not only address the technology aspects, but also many other barriers that are preventing us from getting value. The main one is privacy and regulation. This, this doesn't mean that we, the people that are involved here, will solve these problems. That is completely unrealistic. But of course, what we are doing is creating the right bilateral dialogue with the people that can solve this, with the legal people working for the Commission. And many times we think that we are talking different languages. So they don't understand very well what is the value in US there is one approach, in Europe there is another approach. If you want to make business in Europe, you have to deal maybe with different regulations in all the member states. That is really unfeasible. If there is a startup in Europe that wants to make business, they have to go to US because it's where they can really scale their business. If they are here, they can reduce the market to one country. And if not, they have to change everything depending on the national regulations. But sometimes the regulators do not understand very well what is the value behind that. And therefore, we will create this channel in order to ensure that these things happen a bit faster and we will not depend on five or ten years to change the regulation and ensure that big data has a future here. And uh, in the same way we will tackle skills, business models and commercialization and uh, basically promoting the adoption, not only the development of more technology but the adoption of the technology that is already out there. And this will be done for the traditional industries because they have to change the way they are doing things and then also to make possible that new industries in Europe flourish, even the ones that we have not thought about and we don't know that they will exist in the coming years, but there should be a place for innovation and for new things to happen. Let me give you also some idea about what was the process and the timing. Uh, we started working on this in uh, 2013 and we created something like the, the vision, a frame for big data activities in uh, the future in Europe. Then we organized lots of workshops with around 80 organizations that were representing not only the vendors, but basically, I have my main notes good but basically the usage sectors. So we had workshops with people working in retail, in supply chain, in manufacturing, in energy, in telecommunications, and from all of them we gather inputs and thanks to that we define the strategic research and innovation agenda. And I want to highlight this eye of innovation because this is not anymore research, but innovation, going to the market and not having a prototype that will never reach the market. And uh, once this was validated also through a public consultation that has been open for one month. Uh, we are now ready to say that the European Commission supports this big data value public-private partnership. This is not our aim anymore. This is something that we have achieved in this project with the collaboration with the other initiatives. And that's why I have put in red there the launch of the big data value PPP because this will happen officially in October. And what does it mean basically? This means that if you know the context of the European Commission, uh, we have been able to secure something like 1 billion euro for big data activities that will happen in the period between 2016-2020. We still have to wait a bit, but this means that the industry will have the negotiation power to say to the Commission, this is what we need to be successful in a global world. We don't want you to define as politicians the priorities, we have defined them and we have secured the money to ensure that this will happen. And that's why now we need the community that will be able to implement all these priorities that at this very moment are a list and a definition of things to be done, but they are not done yet. Okay, and here you can see an idea of when we think that we will have to implement the different projects and, uh, and the money that we will have to do it. And uh, as I said before, we don't expect only technology providers to work in this kind of projects. We really need user enterprises, people that are experts in the different application domains, standardization bodies, many different stakeholders. And there you can see somehow what is the involvement that we predict for these different stakeholders in the different activities of the PPP. And below you can see also what is the strategy of the different user industries, which means basically that most of the value in Europe will come from the usage and from the adoption of big data technologies by these kind of industries. And if they are not represented here, we will not see any value in the initiative. So basically, and summarizing, aligning supply and demand is crucial to make business happen. It's not only about supplies, not only about demand, both of them have to meet. 
multidisciplinary stakeholders are needed to make innovation flourish and that is what we are trying to build now. And what is the value proposition for you to join if you are interested? Basically that we will provide access to technology and data assets. This kind of innovation spaces will provide means also for benchmarking and testing, not only of the big data technologies as such, but of the applications that we will create in these environments. Of course, the potential development of new business models, optimizing existing industries and also making uh, possible that other business models happen. We will create a good base of good uh, use cases where people can see the return on investment and that will generate uh, more interest in other industries to ensure that the adoption of big data technologies happen in the coming years. And finally, we will also ensure that we measure in the right way the potential impact of all these technologies, being able to justify in front of the commission, in front of other companies, in front of big and small players, what is the real impact of uh, the money that we are investing here. And the last slide that I have is basically informing you that there will be a formal signing event of this big data value PPP. Uh, be aware that I am saying value is not only big data, it's but big data value. PPP, this will happen the 13th of October in Brussels. There will be the Commissioner Nelly Cruz signing the PPP. So this is not theory, this is something that is already confirmed will happen. As I told you, around 1 billion uh, euro will be devoted to this kind of technologies and if you are interested in taking part in this process since we will be working from now on quite intensively the only thing I can say is that I invite all of you please come to us if you want to get further information if you want to get involved and even if you are interested in attending this event there you have the contact at the European Commission and uh, you can still be invited to attend the private event and, and attend the signature thing with the, with the Nelly Cruz and uh, with some other companies like us that will be present in this event. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm at your disposal for any question that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much.